featuring some of the latest and greatest legends, man. Y'all know what time it is, man. The best on the planet. But before we get into that, y'all know what we always do. It's the word of the day. And that's some knowledge that we drop weekly. Some gems, man. You know, we call it the jewelry store. Dropping some gems for y'all. So let's get into the word of the day. And y'all gonna see this up on the screen. Today's word of the day, the best math you can learn is how to calculate the future cost of your current decisions. I'll say that again. The best math that you can learn is how to calculate the future cost of your current decisions. I mean, basically, a lot of times, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, you can choose your actions, but you can't choose your consequences. So a lot of times in life, you got to realize that everything that you do on a daily basis, that's basically going to be an accumulation of what your future is going to look like. So always make sure, regardless of what you're doing on a day to day, we all got stress, we all got obstacles we face. But be grateful for the blessings that you have, man. You know, don't let the negativity overtake you. And try to make progress every single day, man. They say brick by brick. And that's exactly what it is, man. Just take your time, focus. And that is the word of the day. But aside from that, today we got some very, very special, dynamic, prolific guests in the building. This is a hip-hop legendary group. They are goats in the culture. You know, what they contributed to the culture and continue to contribute to the culture is phenomenal, man. You know, it is no other, the legendary, the classic, the timeless, diggable planets. What's up, King? What's good, what's uh, good? How you living? Yo, everything, everything is everything, man. You know, we alive and blessed, Kings, man. And we, we humble and appreciative of y'all taking out the time, man, just so we can interview y'all today, man. We appreciate it as well, bro. Man, so, you know, I kind of gave the people like a, a glossed overview. I mean, everybody knows diggable planets, man. Unless they living under a rock or they a zombie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody know what time it is, man. They, they know what it is. They know what y'all contributed to the culture. So I guess like the first question I want to ask y'all is, um, you know, to start from the beginning, man, like just tell the listeners like where y'all grew up, um, you know, what, what the beginning and the formative years were like for Diggable Planets. Yeah. Go ahead, see. <laughs> yeah, for me, I mean, I started off just listening, basically just started off. My mom and was my DJ, you know what I'm saying? She contributed to the kind of music that I initially um, was drawn to. Soul, uh, R&B, jazz, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. She would play in the house all the time, you know what I'm saying? And I would creep through her, um, her collection and that piqued my interest. And then w while this was happening out in the streets, you know what I'm saying? You got a burgeoning culture called hip hop. I mean, it wasn't called hip hop then, but we now know it as hip hop was beginning to grow in the streets, you know what I'm saying? From um, house parties to block parties. Um, and it just inspired me, you know what I'm saying? To want to get involved, you know what I mean? And I was super interested. Like everybody around my way was people that I looked up to like Perry P, Grandmasters of Funk, DJ Cosmic Kev, Cash Money, um, people like that, you know what I'm saying? That um, when I was growing up, these people was doing things that I was just like wishing I could do. And because of that, you know what I'm saying, it inspired me to want to get into hip hop and start um, as a DJ. Eventually, when I got to uh, college, I began um, starting doing the, um, the rapping thing. And um, eventually I met up with this cool cat, you know what I'm saying, named Ishmael Butler, running around at these parties, college parties all up and down the East Coast. and um, Eventually we hooked up and started talking and um, realized we had some commonalities in terms of music, people we knew. Um, his peoples lived in the same uh, neighborhood as mine. And we, it, we grew a kinship and that kinship grew into 
uh, him introducing me to this project he was working on called Diggable Planets, and um, just grew from there. Fire, fire, man. What's what's up, King? What's your you know your your take on on the history? Yeah, so uh... very similar. We you know we grew up in the in the eighties, uh, you know seventies and eighties. So we was both young young kids coming up through you know in the aftermath of the sixties movements, you know what I mean? Civil rights movements, uh, self-determination movements, political movements. So we was kind of, our, our, our OGs and, and the sisters that raised us, they soaked us in that type of mentality, you know? And then when hip hop came along, which was coming at the end of like, um, you know, the, the, the big group eras, like, you know, the four tops and five or six cats getting together, singing and dancing the Supremes and all that coming out of that, moving into a new phase of, of creative culture with hip hop. When we heard it, when I heard it, I was just like, it was just like a, a clarion call, you know, like, damn, that's really what I want to do. I want to, I want to participate with this, you know? Mm -hmm. So as a young man, like, um, I started off playing music in jazz band, playing saxophone, hip hop came along. It was just something that, that seduced me. Like I, I wanted to be with it do it all the time, you know what I'm saying? So getting into the late teens, start thinking like, damn, I might be able to, you know, I want to be in a group. I want to make music. I want to do like the cast that I love seeing doing it, you know? And so started dabbling with uh, my bro's home studio, making beats and stuff. And um, uh, basically living in Philly, between Philly, New York, DC, that was kind of our stomping grounds. We would go to those cities and and, and live for a little while or have girlfriends or go to parties and stuff like that. And that's when I start seeing him around. And you know how, when, you know, when you're young, you know, that's how friendships grow. It's very natural. And just like you see a cat next thing you know, you have a conversation. And then I shared the plan with him and, and we was able to, to really make it flourish because um, he knew Mech because he was going to Howard for a little while. She's from DC. So that's how I met her. And, um, and we just started really brainstorming, really just with a dream, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was just a dream, really. Like Biggie <laughs> said, you know, and we was able to really make it a reality. Fact, man. And you know, that that's dope how y'all broke it down. Because to me, like, it comes across, like, so organic and natural. Like, sometimes you got groups, you know, a lot of times labels, they kind of, like, they do it like a science project. Like, they'll genetically engineer these groups, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? But, but Charles was natural. It was like like a family, you know what I'm saying? It still is to this day, you know? For sure, we, we definitely started out, cause back then it's not like now, you know, like if you had a dream to put out a song, nowadays you could do the song at your house and it could be out by midnight tonight if you finish it. But then <laughs> you, 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 you couldn't, like you could make a demo, but that didn't necessarily mean somebody was even gonna listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Much less want to rock with it or do anything with it. So making music at that time was purely passion. And your dreams of, of success, you knew it was a dice throw. You know what I'm saying? At best, you know what I mean? Everybody else knew around your parents and everything was just like, you know what I'm saying? You better have something else to fall back on because ain't nobody making it. So, so the fact that we sort of believed in it, put the energy to it and then made it really happen was, is, is really, really, uh, we was talking earlier saying it's almost, it's like winning the lottery almost, you know what I mean? That's so, it. you know, we, we fortunate, we feel fortunate and all that fortunateness we feel, we try to put it into the energy that we still have when we go do shows, you know what I'm saying? Cause sometimes it gets tiring and arduous, you traveling and you gotta get up early and do things you might not want to do at certain times or not. But at the end of the day, you think like, Damn, oh, this is everything I ever really wanted, and and you back <laughs> on track. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Big facts. Big facts, man. That's a fact. You know, one thing I wanted to ask y'all too, because I know jazz was like a big, big, huge part of y'all sound, y'all style. So, I mean, you know, they they really regard jazz as like the mother of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So, could y'all kind of just talk about how jazz impacted your sound and how that came about? think again like we we before we was like conscious of anything we was just absorbing you know 
and we was absorbing what our, our parents and then our immediate family and then our street family was talking about and into. Your older uncles, your older aunts, they having a house party, you, you sitting around just looking, soaking up gang. What are they listening to? What are they playing? When your one cool uncle come around, oh, he like jazz, he's into this. What, what, what y'all talking about, you know? So we just getting exposed to all this stuff as youngsters. Jazz was always presented as like, cool dudes, you know what I'm saying? They got the suits on, they got the hats, they playing horns, they smoking, they sitting around, they talk cool, they, you know what I mean? So it was like, man, you know, like it was intriguing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So then when you hear the music, they bring it home with the music too. So it's just like that aesthetic is something that all young brothers really had to us to different degrees, you know? When Once we start getting into the music, we kind of leaned into it as a, as a crutch to like emulate that style or that sensibility, you know, and, and jazz does mimic hip hop in a lot of ways or vice versa, because cats in a group, when it comes time for you to do your solo, you, you, you flex your own style, you know, that kind of, th those kind of similarities carry through in hip hop. And we just rolled that wave and tried to like individualize it in a way, you know? That's a big fact, man. And you know what? To elaborate on that too, because I noticed like a lot of times with jazz music, the instrumentation, the way they would flip it a lot of times would be as if it's a vocal arrangement. So, you know, if a dude's playing the trumpet, that's going to fill that space like vocals would on a hip hop track. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, there's so many different similarities just from the, the musicality of it. So, I mean, the way y'all flip that, man, like, I mean, so many tracks, man, timeless tracks. It's crazy, man. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like definitely, man. So salute to y'all. And, um, you know, and one of them tracks in particular, man, uh, you know, talking about Rebirth for Slick, right? And um, in terms of that track, man, just how monumental that was, man, like, I guess for all the listeners, man, like, one of the questions we got, because we told the listeners in advance, like, hey, man, we got the goats coming on, any questions y'all have? So one of the questions that kept coming up, they wanted to know, what was the creative process like for y'all creating that record? Like, what was that like? How did it come about? Like, what was that like for y'all? Actually, see, you should um, talk about that one because it started out in, we said we met. When we both met, we was both doing hip hop. He had a group. I had this group. I'm thinking about this. So he could tell you the story. It's interesting. All right. Yeah, yeah. So I was in a group at the time called the Dread Poor Society based out of Philadelphia. And um, we were we had our own little demo stuff on there. I met this cat and he was doing his thing. He introduced me to a, a project he was trying to put together called Diggable Planets, you know what I'm saying? And and as we were talking, I started listening, we were exchanging ideas, music, you know, stuff like that. And he came across a song that we were doing at the time. We called it a song called Skin Treatment. And um, you know, back in the day, the girls was called, you know, you would call them called getting skins. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's a, the song was about, you know, how we treated our, you know what I'm saying, dealing with uh, the women, you know what I'm saying? So we call it skin treatment, but the song, the actual music was a sample of Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, which happened to be the same exact sample that turns out to be cool like that. Ishmael heard it and was like, yo, I love that joint. That joint is hot. And he asked if we could use it. And the group members was, was agreeing, they agreed to do it. You know what I'm saying? And um, he went in put his little touch and his magic to it. And it became the song that everybody in the world knows today. You know what I mean? Mm, mm. Th Thomas record, man. Thomas record, like everything, man. Even, even from the visuals, like that's a record that like everything just came together perfectly. Like from the visuals to the production, to the raps, man, you know, Thomas, man, Thomas, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, that yeah. was it all the time. We was, we was so excited, bro. Like, Honestly, the first the first year of like making the music, cause like like yo, like I'm telling you, you never really knew what was gonna happen next. Like nowadays, you can kind of predict stuff. Like then, you couldn't predict nothing, bro. Like you didn't think your record was gonna get finished when it got done. You was like something gonna happen to where the, we ain't gonna get to do no video or something. Then the video came out and it started getting on like like video music box and uh, rap city and all that. We was just like, nah, this got to be, this got to be a dream, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it was a wild time, man. And so much music back then too, like, 
so many bands, so many great hip hop groups putting out music. It was like, I look back at the contemporary stuff and it was just too much, bro. Like, yeah, exactly. It yeah, was. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Yeah, man. You know, but that's, that's crazy though. Cause that shows you like destiny too, though. You know, like they got that saying, man, they say, can't nobody block your blessing. You know what I mean? So it's like when something's meant for you, it don't even matter how the odds are stacked, how many other people doing the same thing. It's like what's meant for you is meant for you, man. Y'all was clearly meant to be here doing this because, I mean, it speak, the music speaks for itself, and it still does. You know what I mean? So, you know, another question I have for y'all uh, that a lot of people want to know. So the question was, the group won best rap performance by a duo or group at the Grammys. And that was a fire, fire accomplishment. But despite the accolades, do you guys feel in some ways that was a blessing and a curse at the same time? You know, like, um, you know, like Big say, more money, more problems, or more haters, more people fill away? I don't know. Me personally, I, I look at it as more blessings. I mean, it was, it was more blessing than a curse to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't, I can't recall anything that was um, outside of the fact that, you know, a, a, a few people, were kind of like, you know what I'm saying, upset at the fact that we won that um that award and you know I, but outside of that, I mean, man, that thing opened up so many doors for us and took the record in our career beyond my imagination. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So to me it was more blessing than curse. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's real. And and like a, if something happens to you, what it is 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 a lot due to you you know, is a result of the way you see it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. everybody gonna always say something or feel some type of way about something, but how do you sure. feel about it? What are you gonna do with, with it? You know what I'm saying? And we we never really got into it to, to win awards. It's like even back then, like the Grammy was kind of like not even a real thought for a hip hop group. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think really? we, we might've won the second or third Grammy at all. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't, so we didn't really trip like that. We was happy and proud, but it didn't make or break us. We we was doing what we love to do. So, so. It, everything was a blessing. That's how we looked at it, you know? Yeah. Like, and even to this day now, I'm, I'm very proud of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I got no problems with, with that blessing at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, man. That's a fact. That's a fact, man. And I, like you said, that's an accomplishment, you know? Not everybody can say that. You know, so at the end of the day, it's like, hey, that's a huge accomplishment, you know? So um, another question I have for y'all kings. if y'all Now, we call this the back to the future question, right? Like Marty and the DeLorean, all right? So if y'all could go if y'all could go back in time, right, and give y'all younger selves some advice, you could drop some gems on yourself, what would y'all tell y'all younger selves? Yo, I've been talking to myself for a long time. <laughs> My bad, my past self would be like, okay, man, what else do you want to tell me? Like, <laughs> um, personally, I probably would be like, I would have like um had investments. I would have made investments in things that would still to this day be having um residual. You feel what I'm saying? Earlier in life, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I would have told my 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 younger self the same exact thing you know what i'm saying there was a time when you had i had resources that i squandered i mean i I'm a, i don't regret i don't really regret it. it was the it was it is what it is and it led me to who i am and where i am today so i'm i'm good with it but if i had to tell myself something i'd be like yo man relax chill put some put some of this money aside you know what i'm saying put some of this money aside invest things cuz i had Back in those days, there was people coming at me, but I just didn't, I was either, maybe it was scared money or I just didn't trust it. I didn't understand the platform they were talking, you know, that they were trying to utilize. So I just didn't go, I didn't go with it. But I would tell myself, my younger self, yo, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid, make, make good decisions and keep good people around you to help you, you know what I'm saying? Keep the machine going, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really have, I just had a lot of people around me that was just wanted to party, you know what I'm saying? And that was cool too. I was I ain't mad at it, you know what I'm saying? Cause it is what it is, but I was definitely made better uh, business decisions though. That's a big fact, man. You know, like they say, knowledge is power. So a lot of times, you know, we make decisions based upon what we know, you know, and sometimes the scope is limited based upon the people around us. So 
you know, it's a saying like they say, you know, you hang around five broke people, you're going to be the six. But it's not just limited to money, right? If you hang around five, five broke people mentally, then they ain't going to help you elevate. So that's a fact. It's like, yeah, you know, surrounding yourself with people, too, that, you know, at the end of the day, yo, if you got a hem, I got a screwdriver, we could build something together. You know what I'm saying? So it's real talks. It's real talks right there, man. Um, another question I have for y'all kings. What's a mantra that y'all live by? Like, mine's, I got two mantras. The first one is collaboration is greater than competition. I love building with, like, like-minded people. And then my second one is persistence, wisdom, resistance. So no matter what you go through, just got to keep forging ahead. So is it like a mantra that you guys got, man, that kind of throughout the years keep y'all focused, locked in, keep you going, you know? You know? Man, so you, it's, it's, it's like you, it's like you had time. It's had like you had time to think about your yeah, you, you <laughs> It's like you had a think tank and everybody that broke that shit. <laughs> Yo, I had nothing as cool. As that. <laughs> Mine's a I'm about to adapt. I'm about to adapt. Yo, it don't it don't got to rhyme either. It ain't got to rhyme. You got... <laughs> nah, uh, only thing only thing I would say is like um you know it's not a mantra but but I try to think like this. I try to look at life like a child looks at life. I still try to have wonder and fascination with everyday things, you know, to make to make my life richer and and to work, man. If you got a passion and you really want to see something happen, you got to understand it happens incrementally, not all at once, you know? So you get up, you learn something, you strive and you work, and some result is going to come of that. You know, whether it's the thing you envision, maybe not, but you're going to make some progress along the way and find out a lot about yourself and about the world. That's a good one. I like that. Yeah, I would say mine is, mine is simply stay true to yourself. And stay open minded. You know what I mean? Definitely. That yo, both of those is gems, man. And I think, especially now in today's society, when you look at the internet, you know, it's a great tool, but also it can be kind of destructive too. Like you see a lot of people always comparing themselves. You know, like they looking on social media, they seeing people flossing, people always posting their wins, but they don't post their losses. You know, so psychologically you got people feeling the way. So, like you said, man, yo, you know, just run your own race. And kind of just tap into that that innocence like a child, like not to be so jaded, but just to see the see the world from a different view, you know, that you can still do something. You know what I mean? For y'all, man, we're gonna switch it up, man. We're gonna switch gears, man. Top five dead alive. Who are y'all favorite five MCs, man? All right. Uh, you ready, C? <laughs> nah, go ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> okay. My favorite. My favorite. I'm just now, cats got to understand, if people say they're their favorite, they're not saying they're the best five ever. These are my favorite, all right? Yeah. Right? Um, Rakim. Mm. You can chime in, too, because I might have to think, too. I, I got Rakim. <laughs> Rakim is definitely on my list, too. He's definitely okay, on my list. Okay, okay. I'll say Rakim. I'll say... Um, uh, Melly Mel. Okay. I would say um uh Nas. Mm. Um I say uh, MC Light. Mm. <laughs> and one more. I mean, it's hard because you know what I'm saying, because you, you I'm leaving out a gazillion other cats yeah. that I crazy respect for and then you know who I gotta put on my list is run. Run, yeah. don't really understand how run really... that, them as a group. I was thinking of them because is that as a group, they were my they my favorite all time yeah. group hip hop for real. Well that 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 was the second question I'm gonna ask you after this. Who's your favorite groups? Yeah. Oh okay. Oh wait, damn. Yeah, um I, I really like big. Yeah. Uh, I like ice cube. Mm. Um, yeah, me too. I like Rock Marciano. Yeah. Um, and Nas, yeah, Nas, I like Nas. I'm gonna just, I, yeah. I, all right, man, it's all right, because we can actually do a top five of every, each generation, because it's, because it's, it's yeah. hard sometimes, 
you forget, you talk about all the ones that's like right here in your face now. Like you can say the Jay Z's, you can say, you know, what I'm saying the Kendrick Lamar's, but then you, yeah. but then if you did lose, you forget about the Melly Mel's, who was a, a incredible Grandmaster Kaz's. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We can't, it, it's hard, man. It's hard. Five is not enough, man. Five. Yeah, plus all them cats from back then, we got to understand everything that Cass is doing now that you might like. It's all based on these cats that hadn't really, they didn't have no predecessors. They really yeah. just thought of this stuff. You know what yep, I mean? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's a double impact. And when we was young, we we remember the first rapper. Like, I could tell you now, like, 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 I mean, Sugar Hill Gang, them brothers, like, they turned it out. Like, they, it's, you know, like, without them, it's nothing going on, really. You know what I mean? So. But them, those five, they stick out to me. I give them, I, I stop there. I don't know what else. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, all right. So the next question, like I told y'all, who's y'all top five groups, hip hop groups that y'all think? I say, DMC. yeah, definitely run DFC. I say De La Soul. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rest in peace, rest in peace to the God that passed away. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say Native Tongues because yeah, I could, I could use up this entire list just on the native tongues like Jungle Brothers. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, There's a bunch right. of them. So I'm just gonna say native Tribe tongues Paul is one Quest. of them. Yeah, yeah tribes like so many of them. So I'm just gonna say native tongues. I'm gonna say Run DMC. I'm gonna say Mob Deep. Outcast. Outcast, yeah. definitely Outcast. NWA. Oh, uh, NWA. Um, Freestyle Fellowship was one of my favorites. Um. Oh man. <laughs> You got the woo, you got woo tag. Oh. oh yeah, you got the woo. Come on, you got the woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um damn, it's a whole, it's a bunch of groups, man. That I love, man. Oh. But that that right there, that's that's a solid, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Who you got? Five. Who you got? Who you always be ready, man. Who you who you got? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I see yo, my, my favorite man, yo, the woo at the top. You know what I'm saying? Just because, yo, man, so much talent in that group, man. Ray Kwan, Method Man, you know what I'm saying? Like RZA, it's crazy. Um, I like the locks, man. You know, coming from New York, like that's what we was bumping, man. LOX, living off experience, you know, Jada Kiss Styles, man. And um, no, I always felt like Styles didn't get the credit he deserved, man. You know, just because, you know, being in the group with Kiss, man, Kiss got a lot of accolades, but Styles is nasty too. So, yeah, the locks. Let me see. Wu Tang. Who else, man? Down South, man. Outcast. You know, I feel like those cats, man, super talented, man. I think like three stacks, man. Like that, the way that dude pins like his words and puts it together, man, he's so intricate. Like he's a monster, man. You know, like super talented. Um, that's three. Let me see. I got two more. Yo, man, diggable planets, man. I got to put y'all in there, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, real talk. Because, like, for me growing up, yo, that was the shit that I was bumping all the time, man. Like, all of that, man. All y'all records and stuff like that, man. I think, like, y'all were really, like, just groundbreakers, man. You know what I'm saying? So, salute to y'all. And that last spot, man, this, this is hard, man. The last one. Man, I feel like y'all. <laughs> try, try, try to pick the last spot, man. Um... Damn, if, if I had to pick a last spot, man, who would it be, man? Um, I'm a man, I'ma do like you said, native tongues, man, because you know, Tribe Core Quest, that, that whole whole just crew, man, just dynamic, you know, and and you know, just making solid music, man, consistently. You know what I mean? Rest in peace to Fife, but yeah, just fire, man. Fire. So rest in peace to True Boy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, man. So that's real talk, man. Real talk, Kings. So, you know, a question I have for y'all, man, because, you know, we got like technology changed so much, man. Like we seen like a lot of errors. We saw, you know, MySpace come and go. Then it was Facebook. Then you got Instagram. So, you know, the question I want to ask y'all is like, how has technology impacted y'all art? Because, um, you know, when you guys came out, all this stuff wasn't out. I mean, you know, it was just the music spoke for itself. Nowadays, you got the streaming era, all these things. So how has things transitioned for you guys in this quote unquote new era? You know, we haven't really utilized it as a group that much. 
individually, we both have, you know, projects that we've been able to realize really through like um, independent production and release. You know what I'm saying? Which wasn't something you could really do back then, you know, yeah. because the mechanism to releasing wasn't, oh, you upload some shit. You know what I'm saying? You had to get a physical copy of something and it had to be taken to a DJ at a radio station and he would have to play it, period. You know what I mean? So that freedom is big, but anytime you get a bunch of freedom, then you get an inundation of a lot of people that would have got weeded out because of quality concerns, or maybe even if they was good enough, they didn't have a certain connection or something. So it's just, it just broadened the space in which people can participate, which makes it harder to rise. But, you know, I feel like it is what it is. I, I, I don't really look at it as a bad thing or a good thing, but just a real thing. And yeah. Oh, we lost our man. Te technical difficulties, man. <laughs> he'll be, he'll be, he'll be, I'm sure he'll tap back in. We lost him though. But you want pick you want to pick it up, King? In the meantime, yeah, of the, I mean the cream the cream will rise to the top. I mean, like he was saying, I mean you get you do have the inundation, but the cream always rises to the top. You know what I mean? You we we find the good stuff. You know what I'm saying? And there's definitely stuff that gets lost in the internet because it's so vast. It's like a it's like a universe within itself. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Uh, it, you can get lost in that world, man. It, it takes a lot more money uh, nowadays uh, to get your record out. You know what I'm saying? You and you got to do it a lot more self. You got to be a lot more self sustaining nowadays than you had to back in the days. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it, back in the days was about relationships. I mean, it's still about relationships, but back then you had to know somebody to get you into the, even into the door of these record companies. You know what I'm saying? Or have a this particular a and r listen to your record you know what i'm saying and then give you an opportunity to put the record out you know what i'm saying because it was only a few um independent minded um hustlers like too short schoolie d people like that who thought in the way of being independent you know what i'm saying those, those cats when they first came out they they, they changed the entire game because not only did they put music out but they put it out themselves and, it, and nowadays that's what everybody it's like what everybody do but mm -hmm. back then that wasn't something that everybody did, you know what I mean? Right. You didn't, first of all, you didn't have the money to do it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You didn't have the, the knowledge, you know what I'm saying, to, to be able to do it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when those cats did it, that was crazy game changing, man, because it took a lot. You had to, back in those, you had to grease certain radio, uh, radio station, DJs, palms to get your record played, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? All the competition with all the, the uh, distribution, you know what I'm saying? It was, certain group of people mafia type motherfuckers had control over distribution and blah 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 blah. it was hard to break through you know what i'm saying mm. unless you was a part of a major label mm. you, know, you don't need them you know what i'm saying but they boarded it down with the streaming thing because now everybody can get your music they, one person can pay 9.99 and can listen to all the music they want all day which as a consumer is great like i'm like whoa that's that's dope i want that but as an artist <laughs> Like oh shit! What the fuck? Wait a minute! These motherfuckers can pay nine ninety nine and hear my music all day long, and all I get is like what five cents? If if that, yeah, it's like it's like a fraction of a penny. Yeah, yeah man. That that's yeah. the that's the that's the crazy part of modern day music. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to back in the day, you know what I mean? That, it's yo. easier, but at the same time, we still got mad. Um, things that we got to get over. Like, this is a mad obstacle right here. That I don't know how we're going to get past this because the record labels and all these other companies are so entrenched with these streaming services. The artist is getting fucked. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Real, yo, I agree with you 110%, man. And you know that, like you said, for the consumer, that's good money. It's like, yo, I pay $10. It's like a buffet. All you can eat. I'm getting some of this. <laughs> you know it's <laughs> that's real talk it's like you know but but at the end of the day it's like all right it's all you can eat for them but what about the chef you know what i'm saying that's cooking it up you feel me like that's crazy man like you know I, I feel like you know the rate of consumption with music like nowadays like it's a depreciation of it and people don't get that you know like for artists artists still got to sustain a lifestyle and the fact that, you know, you got to get so many streams just to get a fraction of a penny is disrespectful, man. 
You know what I'm saying? Is the and the labels don't care because at the end of the day, they got so many artists, they'll make a decent return on that before the individual artists they ain't jacking it, man. Yeah, because I mean, for real, for real, on the low, I think these labels have secret deals with these streaming services. Of course. Because they they're getting paid. These motherfuckers is getting paid. You know what I'm of saying? Of course. But it's the it's getting it's getting raped, man. It's terrible, man. It's terrible. Yo, real talk, man. I tell you, man, I had put out a couple of tracks and um the labels that I had signed some of those deals with for some songs that you know we put out through our company, whatever, for like TV and film. Yo, they told us straight up, yo, we got deals with some of these streaming services, whether it's, you know, this one or that one, where we get prime time placement. So they cutting deals on the side to get songs placed so they can get more streams. And that's what it is. It's all politics. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I think ultimately things need to change with equitable across the board. I saw most did um he did Talib's uh podcast and most was talking about it. And he was spitting all facts. He was like, yo, I forgot how he said it. He was like, yo, I don't know who did this Dr. Seuss, Dr. Doolittle mathematics <laughs> to decide you get a fraction of a penny for your music. But he's like, yo, don't disrespect my art, B. And he absolutely right. You know what I'm saying? Actual facts. Yeah. Yeah, but yo, man, I got a, um, I got another interview to do coming up soon, man. So, I mean, I got to go soon, but it was nice talking. Yo, mo most definitely, King. Look, well, we appreciate y'all taking out the time, man. And, um, you know, much salute to y'all, man. Much respect, man. I see the technical difficulties. My man got got knocked out, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but it's all good, man. Yo, we appreciate y'all and salute y'all, King. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having us, man. No and, doubt. yo, 30th anniversary tour, Diggable Planets. We're going to be out somewhere in some city around the world performing our first album, Reaching, from beginning to end. You know what I'm saying? So if you see us in your city, come check us out. If you want tickets, go to officialdiggableplanets.com. All right. Bye. Bye. One love, brother. One love, man.